Hi, welcome to our channel of IGNU Audiobooks, Indira Gandhi National Open University, School of Computer and Information Sciences, SOCIS, Master's Degree Programs, Master of Computer Applications, MCA, New, Semester I, MCS to 13 Software Engineering, Block 1 An Overview of Software Engineering, Unit 1 Software Engineering and its Models, 1.0 Introduction. The field of software engineering is related to the development of software. Large, software needs systematic development unlike simple programs which can be developed in isolation and there may not be any systematic approach being followed. In the last few decades, the computer industry has undergone revolutionary changes in hardware, that is, processor technology, memory technology, and integration of Devices have changed very rapidly. As the software is required to maintain compatibility with hardware, the complexity of software also has changed much in the recent past. In 1970, as the programs were small, simple, and executed on a simple uniprocessor system, the development of software for such systems was much easier. In the present situation, High-speed multiprocessor systems are available and the software is required to be developed for the whole organization. Naturally, the complexity of software has increased many folds. Thus, the need for the application of engineering techniques in their development is realized. The application of engineering approach to software development lead to the evolution of the area of software engineering. The IEEE Glossary of Software Engineering Terminology defines the software engineering as a. the application of a systematic, disciplined, quantifiable approach to the development, operation and maintenance of software, that is, the application of engineering to software. b. the study of approaches in a. there is a difference between programming and software engineering. Software engineering includes activities like cost estimation, time estimation, designing, coding, documentation, maintenance, quality assurance, testing of software, etc., whereas programming includes only the coding part. Thus, it can be said that programming activity is only a subset of software development activities. The above mentioned features are essential features of software. Besides these essential features, additional features like reliability, future expansion, software reuse, etc. are also considered. Reliability is of utmost importance in real-time systems like flight control, medical applications, etc. 1.1 Objectives After going through this unit, you should be able to define software engineering, understand the evolution of software engineering, understand the characteristics of software, learn about phases of software development life cycle, and understand software development models. One point to evolution of software engineering, any application on computer runs through software. As computer technologies have changed tremendously in the last five decades, accordingly, the software development has undergone significant changes in the last few decades of 20th century. In the early years, the software size used to be small and those were developed either by a single programmer or by a small programming team. The program development was dependent on the programmer's skills and no strategic software practices were present. In the early 1980, as the size of software and the application domain of software increased. Consequently, its complexity has also increased. Bigger teams were engaged in the development of software. The software development became more bit organized and software development management practices came into existence. In this period, higher order programming languages like Pascal and COBOL came into existence. The use of these made programming much easier. In this decade, some Structural design practices like top-down approach were introduced. The concept of quality assurance was also introduced. However, the business aspects like cost, estimation, 
time estimation etc. of software were in their elementary stages, in the late 1980s and 1990s software development underwent revolutionary changes, instead of a programming team in an organization. Full-fledged software companies, evolved, called software houses. A software house's primary business is to produce software. As software house may offer a range of services, including hiring out of suitably qualified personnel to work within client esteem, consultancy, and a complete system design and development service. The output of these companies was software. Thus, they viewed the software as a product and its functionality as a process. The concept of software engineering was introduced and software became more strategic, disciplined and commercial. As the developer of software and user of software became separate organization, business concepts like software costing, software quality, laying off well-defined requirements, software reliability, etc. came into existence. In this phase an entirely new computing environments based on a knowledge-based systems get created. Moreover, a powerful new concept of object-oriented programming was also introduced, the production of software became much commercial. The software development tools were devised. The concept of computer-aided software engineering case tools came into existence. The software development became faster with the help of case tools the latest trend in software engineering includes the concepts of software reliability, reusability, scalability, etc. More and more importance is now given to the quality of the software product. Just as automobile companies try to develop good quality, automobiles, software companies try to develop good quality software. The software creates the most valuable product of the present era. I. Information. The following table summarizes the evolution of software, 1960s in fancy machine code, 1970s project years, higher order languages, 1980s project years, project development, 1990s process and production era software reuse, the problems arising in the development of software is termed as crisis. It includes the problems arising in the process of development of software rather than software functioning. Besides development, the problems may be present in the maintenance and handling of large volumes of software. Some of the common misunderstandings regarding software development are given below. 1. Correcting errors is easy. Though the changes in the software are possible, but making changes in large software is extremely difficult task too. By proper development of software, it can function perfectly at first time, though, theoretically, it seems correct, but practically software undergoes many development coding testing passes before becoming perfect for working. 3. Loose objective definition can be used at starting point. Once a software is developed using loose objective, Changing it for specific objectives may require complete change. 4. More manpower can be added to speed up the development. Software is developed by well-coordinated teams. Any person joining it at a later stage may require extra efforts to understand the code, software standards, various terms related to software engineering are regularly standardized by organizations like IEEE. Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineers, NSI, American National Standards Institute, OMG, Object Management Group, CORBA, Common Object Request Broker Architecture, DOT. IEEE regularly publishes software development standards, OMG is International Trade Organization. HTTP colon double forward slash www.ohm.org and is one of the largest consortiums in the software industry. CORBA defines the standard capabilities that allow objects to interact with each other. 1.3 Software Development Models Software Engineering deals with the development of software. Hence, understanding the basic characteristics of software is essential. Software is different from other 
engineering products in the following ways one engineering products once developed cannot be changed two modifications the product redesigning and remanufacturing is required in the case of software ultimately changes are to be done in code for any changes to take effect too the other engineering products are visible but the software as such is not visible that is why it is said that software is developed but not manufactured though like other products it is first designed then produced it cannot be manufactured automatically on an assembly line like other engineering products nowadays case computer aided software engineering tools are available for software development still it depends on the programmer skill and creativity the creative skills of the programmer is difficult to quantify and standardize hence the same software developed by different programmers may take varying amount of time resources and may have variable cost 3 software does not fail in the traditional sense the engineering products has wear and tear in the operation software can be run any number of times without wear and tear the software is considered as failed if a it does not operate correctly b does not provide the required number of features four engineering products can be perfectly designed but in the case of software however good the design it can never be 100% error free even the best quality software is not completely error free a software is called good quality software if it performs the required operation even if it has a few errors 5 the testing of normal engineering products and software engineering products are on different parameters in the former it can be full load testing etc whereas in the case of software testing means identification of test cases in which software may fail thus testing of software means running of software for different inputs by testing the presence of errors is identified 6 unlike most of the other engineering products software can be reused once a piece of code is written for some application it can be reused 7 the management of software development projects is a highly demanding task since it involves the assessment of the developer's creative skills the estimation regarding the time and cost of software needs standardization of developer's creativity which can be a variable quantity it means that software projects cannot be managed like engineering products the correction of a bug in the case of software may take hours but it may not be the case with normal engineering products 8 the software is not vulnerable to external factors like environmental effects but the same external factors may harm hardware the hardware component may be replaced with spare parts in the case of failure whereas the failure of a software component may indicate the errors in design thus the characteristics of software are quite different from other engineering products hence the software industry is quite different from other industries 1.3.1 importance of software engineering as the application domains of software are becoming complicated and design of big software without a systematic approach is virtually impossible the field of software engineering is increasingly gaining importance it is now developing like an industry thus the industry has to answer following or similar queries of clients one what is the best approach to design of software to why the cost of software is too high 3 why can tv find all errors 4 why is there always some gap between claim performance and actual performance to answer all such queries software development has adopted a systematic approach software development should not remain an art scientific basis for cost duration risks defects etc are required for quality assurance product qualities and process qualities and must be made measurable as far as possible by developing metrics for them 1.3 to various development models the following are some of the models adopted to develop software 
AI, build and fix model, it is a simple to phase model. In one phase, code is developed and in another, code is fixed. Figure 1.1 depicts the build and fix model, develop code, fix the code, until the client is satisfied, deliver the product. To waterfall model, it is the simplest, oldest and most widely used process model. In this model, each phase of the life cycle is completed before the start of a new phase. It is actually the first engineering approach of software development. Figure 1.2 depicts waterfall model, requirements analysis, design, coding, testing. Maintenance, the functions of various phases are discussed in software process technology. The waterfall model provides a systematic and sequential approach to software development and is better than the build and fix approach. But, in this model, complete requirements should be available at the time of commencement of the project. But in actual practice, the requirements keep on originating during different phases. The waterfall model can accommodate the new requirements only in maintenance phase. Moreover, it does not incorporate any kind of risk assessment. In waterfall model, a working model of software is not available. Thus, there is no methods to judge the problems of software in between different phases. A slight modification of the waterfall model is a model with feedback. One software is developed and is operational, then the feedback to various phases may be given. Figure 1.3 depicts the waterfall model with feedback, requirements analysis, design, coding, testing, maintenance. 3. Iterative Enhancement Model This model was developed to remove the shortcomings of waterfall model. In this model, the phases of software development remain the same, but the construction and delivery is done in the iterative mode. In the first iteration, a less capable product is developed and delivered for use. This product satisfies only a subset of the requirements. In the next iteration, a product with incremental features is developed. Every iteration consists of all phases of the waterfall model. The complete product is divided into releases and the developer delivers the product release by release. Figure 1.4 depicts the iterative enhancement model. Iteration 1 waterfall model. Iteration 2 waterfall model. Figure 1.4 iterative enhancement model. This model is useful when less manpower is available for software development and the release deadlines are tight. It is best suited for in-house product development, where it is ensured that the user has something to start with. The main disadvantage of this model is that iteration may never end, and the user may have to endlessly wait for the final product. The cost estimation is also tedious because it is difficult to relate the software development cost with the number of requirements for prototyping model. In this model, a working model of actual software is developed initially. The prototype is just like a sample software having lesser functional capabilities and low reliability and it does not undergo through the rigorous testing phase. Developing a working prototype in the first phase overcomes the disadvantage of the waterfall model where the reporting about serious errors is possible only after completion of software development the working prototype is given to the customer for operation. The customer, after its use, gives the feedback. Analyzing the feedback given by the customer, the developer refines, adds the requirements and prepares the final specification document. Once the prototype becomes operational, the actual product is developed using the normal waterfall model. Figure 1.5 depicts the prototyping model. The prototype model has the following features. I. It helps in determining user requirements more deeply. 2. At the time of actual product development, the customer feedback is available. 3. It does consider any types of risks at the initial level. V. Spiral model. This model can be considered as the model which combines the strengths of various other models. Conventional software development processes do not take uncertainties into account. 
Important software projects have failed because of unforeseen risks. The other models view the software process as a linear activity whereas this model considers it as a spiral process. This is made by representing the iterative development cycle as an expanding spiral. The following are the primary activities in this model. Finalizing objective. The objectives are set for the particular phase of the project. Risk analysis. The risks are identified to the extent possible. They are analyzed and necessary steps are taken. Development. Based on the risks that are identified, an SDLC model is selected and is followed. Planning. At this point, the work done till this time is reviewed. Based on the review, a decision regarding whether to go through the loop of spiral again or not will be decided. If there is need to go, then planning is done accordingly. In the spiral model, these phases are followed iteratively. Figure 1.6 depicts the Bohmes spiral model, IEEE 1988. Figure 1.6 spiral model. Look at the screen. In this model, software development starts with lesser requirements specification, lesser risk analysis, etc. The radical dimension this model represents cumulative cost. The angular dimension represents progress made in completing the cycle. The inner cycles of the spiral model represent early phases of requirements analysis. And after prototyping of software, the requirements are refined in the spiral model. After each phase a review is performed regarding all products, developed up to that point, and plans are devised for the next cycle. This model is a realistic approach to the development of large-scale software. It suggests a systematic approach according to classical life cycle, but incorporates it into iterative framework. It gives a direct consideration to technical risks. Thus, for high-risk projects, this model is very useful. The risk analysis and validation steps eliminate errors in early phases of development. 6. RAD approach. As the name suggests, this model gives a quick approach for software development and is based on a linear sequential flow of various development processes. The software is constructed on a component basis. Thus, multiple teams are given the task of different component development. It increases the overall speed of software development. It gives a fully functional system within very short time. This approach emphasizes the development of reusable program components. It follows a modular approach for development. The problem with this model is that it may not work when technical risks are high. 1.4 Capability Maturity Models The process models are based on various software development phases whereas the capability models have an entirely different basis of development. They are based upon the capabilities of software. It was developed by Software Engineering Institute, SEI. In this model, significant emphasis is given to the techniques to improve the software quality and process maturity. In this model, a strategy for improving software process is devised. It is not concerned which life cycle mode is followed for development. SEI has laid guidelines regarding the capabilities an organization should have to reach different levels of process maturity. This approach evaluates the global effectiveness of a software company. 1.4.1 Maturity Levels It defines five maturity levels as described below. Different organizations are certified for different levels based on the processes they follow. Level 1 Initial at this maturity level Software is developed an ad hoc basis and no strategic approach is used for its development. The success of developed software entirely depend upon the skills of the team members. As no sound engineering approach is followed, the time and cost of the project are not critical issues. In maturity level 1 organizations, the software process is unpredictable because if the developing team changes, the process will change. The testing of software is also very simple and accurate predictions regarding software quality are not possible.
SCI is assessment indicates that the vast majority of software organizations are level 1 organizations. Level 2, repeatable the organization satisfies all the requirements of level 1. At this level, basic project management policies and related procedures are established. The institutions achieving this maturity level learn with experience of earlier projects and reutilize the successful practices in ongoing projects. The effective process can be characterized as practiced, documented, implemented and trained. In this maturity level, the manager provides quick solutions to the problem encountered in software. Development and corrective action is immediately taken. Hence, the process of development is much disciplined in this maturity level. Thus, without measurement, sufficiently realistic estimates regarding cost. Schedules and functionality are performed. The organizations of this maturity level have installed basic management controls. Level 3 define the organization satisfies all the requirements of Level 2. At this maturity level, the software development processes are well defined, managed, and documented. Training is imparted to staff to gain the required knowledge. The standard practices are simply tailored to create new projects. Level 4 managed the organization satisfies all the requirements of Level 3. At this, Level quantitative standards are set for software products and processes. The project analysis is done at integrated organizational level and collective database is created. The performance is measured at integrated organization level. The software development is performed with well-defined instruments. The organization is capability at level 4 is predictable because projects control their products and processes to ensure their performance within quantitatively specified limits. The quality of software is high. Level 5, optimizing the organization satisfies all the requirements of level 4. This is last level. The organization at this maturity level is considered almost perfect. At this level, the entire organization continuously works for process improvement with the help of quantitative feedback obtained from lower level. The organization analyzes its weakness and takes required corrective steps proactively to prevent the errors. Based on the cost-benefit analysis of new technologies, the organization changes their software development processes. 1.4 point to key process areas, the SEI has associated key process areas, KPAs, with each maturity level. The KPA is an indicative measurement of goodness of software engineering functions like project planning, requirements management, etc. The KPA consists of the following parameters, goals, objectives to be achieved, commitments, the requirements that the organization should meet to ensure the claimed quality of product, abilities, the capabilities an organization has, activities, the specific tasks required to achieve KPA function. Methods for varying implementation. It explains how the KPAs can be verified. 18 KPAs are defined by SCI and associated with different maturity levels. These are described below. Level 1 KPAs. There is no key process area at level 1. Level 2 KPAs. 1. Software project planning. Gives concrete plans for software management. 2. Software project tracing oversight, establish adequate visibility into actual process to enable the organization to take immediate corrective steps if software performance deviates from plans. 3. Requirements management. The requirements are well specified to develop a contract between developer and customer. 4. Software subcontract management. Select qualified software subcontractors and manage them effectively. 5. Software Quality Assurance SQA to assure the quality of developed product. 6. Software Configuration Management SCM establish maintain integrity throughout the life cycle of project. Level 3 KPAs 1. Organization Process Focus OPF the organization's responsibility is fixed for software process activities that improve the ultimate software process. 
capability. 2. Training program, TP it imparts training to develop the skills and knowledge of organization staff. 3. Organization process definition, OPD it develops a workable set of software process to enhance cumulative long-term benefit of organization by improving process performance. 4. Integrated Software Management ISIN the software management and software engineering activities are defined and a tailor-made standard and software process suiting to organization's requirements is developed. 5. Software Product Engineering SPE well-defined software engineering activities are integrated to produce correct, consistent software products, effectively and efficiently. 6. Intergroup Coordination I to satisfy the customer's needs effectively and efficiently. Software engineering groups are created. These groups participate actively with other groups. 7. Peer reviews PR they remove defects from software engineering work, products, level 4 KPAs. 1. Quantitative process management QP it defines quantitative standards for software process. 2. Software quality management SQM it develops quantitative understanding of the quality of software products and achieves specific quality goals. Level 5 KPAs 1. Defect prevention DP it discovers the causes of defects and devises the techniques which prevent them from recurring. 2. Technology change management TCM it continuously upgrades itself according to new tools, methods and processes. 3. Process change management PCM it continually improves the software processes used in organization to improve software quality, increase productivity, and decrease cycle time for product development. 1.5 Software Process Technology The software industry considers software development as a process. According to Booch and Rumboff, a process defines who is doing what, when and how to reach a certain goal. Software engineering is a field which combines process, methods and tools for the development of software. The concept of process is the main step in the software engineering approach. Thus, a software process is a set of activities. When those activities are performed in specific sequence in accordance with ordering constraints, the desired results are produced. A software development project requires two types of activities with development and project management activities. These activities together comprise of a software process. As various activities are being performed in software process, these activities are categorized into groups called phases. Each phase performs well-defined activities, the various steps, called phases, which are adopted in the development of this Process are collectively termed as Software Development Life Cycle, SDLC. The various phases of SDLC are discussed below. Normally, these phases are performed linearly or circularly, but it can be changed according to project as well. The software is also considered as a product and its development as a process. Thus, these phases can be termed as Software Process Technology. In general, different phases of SDLC are defined as following requirements analysis, design, coding, software testing, maintenance. Let us discuss these steps in detail. Requirements analysis Requirements describe the what of a system. The objectives which are to be achieved in software process development are the requirements. In the requirements analysis phase, the requirements are properly defined and noted down. The output of this phase is SRS, Software Requirements Specification, document written in natural language. According to IEEE, requirements analysis may be defined as 1. The process of studying user s needs to arrive at a definition of system hardware and software. Requirements 2. The process of studying and refining system hardware or software requirements design. In this phase, a logical system is built which fulfills the given requirements. Design phase of software development deals with transforming the customer's requirements into a logically working system. 
Normally, design is performed in the following two steps. I. Primary design phase. In this phase, the system is designed at block level. The blocks are created on the basis of analysis done in the problem. Identification phase. Different blocks are created for different functions. Emphasis is put on minimizing the information flow between blocks. Thus, all activities which require more interaction are kept in one block. 2. Secondary design phase. In the secondary design phase, the detailed design of every block is performed. The input to the design phase is the software requirements specification, SRS, document, and the output is the software design document, STD. The general tasks involved in the design process are the following. I. Design various blocks for overall system processes. 2. Design smaller, compact, and workable modules in each block. 3. Design various database structures. 4. Specify details of programs to achieve desired functionality. We design the form of inputs and outputs of the system. 6. Perform documentation of the design. 7. System reviews. The software design is a core of the software engineering process and the first of three important technical activities with design, coding, and testing that are required to build software. The design should be done keeping the following points in mind. I. It should completely and correctly describe the system. 2. It should precisely describe the system. It should be understandable to the software developer. 3. It should be done at the right level. 4. It should be maintainable. The following points should be kept in mind while performing the design. I. Practicality. This ensures that the system is stable and can be operated by a person of average intelligence. 2. Efficiency. This involves accuracy, timeliness and comprehensiveness of system output. 3. Flexibility. The system could be modifiable depending upon changing needs of the user. Such amendments should be possible with minimum changes. 4. Security. This is an important aspect of design and should cover areas of hardware reliability, fallback procedures, security of data, and provision for detection of fraud. Coding. The input to the coding phase is the STD document. In this phase, the design document is coded according to the module specification. This phase transforms the STD document into a high-level language code. At present, major software companies adhere to some well-specified and standard style of coding called coding standards. Good coding standards improve the understanding of code. Once a module is developed, a check is carried out to ensure that coding standards are followed. Coding standards generally give the guidelines about the following. I. Name of the module. 2. Internal and external documentation of source code. 3. Modification history. 4. Uniform appearance of codes. Testing. Testing is the process of running the software on manually created inputs with the intention to find errors. In the process of testing, an attempt is made to detect errors. 2. Correct the errors in order to develop error-free software. The testing is performed keeping the user's requirements in mind and before the software is actually launched on a real system, it is tested. Testing is the process of executing a program with the intention of finding errors. Normally, while developing the code, the software developer also carries out some testing. This is known as debugging. This unearths the defects that must be removed from the program. Testing and debugging are different processes. Testing is meant for finding the existence of defects while debugging stands for locating the place of errors and correcting the errors during the process of testing. The following are some guidelines for testing. I. Test the modules thoroughly. Cover all the access paths. Generate enough data to cover all the access paths arising from conditions. 2. Test the modules by deliberately passing wrong data. 3. Specifically create data for conditional statements. Enter data in test file which would satisfy the condition and again test the script. 4. Test for locking by invoking multiple concurrent processes. The following objectives are to be kept in mind while performing testing. 
I. It should be done with the intention of finding the errors. 2. Good test cases should be designed, which have a probability of finding, as yet, undiscovered error. 3. A success test is one that uncovers yet undiscovered errors. The following are some of the principles of testing. I. All tests should be performed according to user requirements. 2. Planning of tests should be done long before testing. 3. Starting with a small test, it should proceed towards large tests. The following are different levels of testing. Large systems are built out of subsystems. Subsystems are made up of modules, modules of procedures and functions. Thus in large systems, the testing is performed at various levels like unit level testing, module level testing, subsystem level and system level testing. Thus, testing is performed at the following levels. In all levels, the testing are performed to check interface integrity, information content, performance. The following are some of the strategies of testing. This involves design of test cases. Test case is set of design data for which the system is tested. Two testing strategies are present. I. Code testing. The code testing strategy examines the logic of the system. In this, the analyst develops test cases for every instruction in the code. All the parts in the program are tested. This test does not guarantee against software failures. Also, it does not indicate whether the code is according to requirements or not. 2. Specification testing. In this, testing with specific cases is performed. The test cases are developed for each condition or combination of conditions and submitted for processing. The objective of testing is to design test cases that systematically uncover different classes of errors and do so with the minimum amount of time and effort. Testing cannot show the absence of errors. It can only find the presence of errors. The test case design is as challenging as software development. Still, however effective the design is, it cannot remove 100% errors. Even the best quality software are not 100% error-free. The reliability of software is closely dependent on testing. Some testing techniques are the black box and the white box methods. White box testing, this method, also known as glass box testing, is performed early in the testing process. Using this, the software engineer can derive a test that guarantees that all independent paths within the module have been exercised at least once. It has the following features. I. Exercise all logical decisions on their true and false sides. 2. Execute all loops at their boundaries and within their operational bounds. 3. Exercise internal data structures to assure their validity. Black box testing. This is applied during the later stage of testing. It enables the software developer to derive a set of input conditions that will fully exercise the functional requirements of a program. It enables him to find errors like incorrect or missing functions, interface errors, data structures or external database access errors, and performance errors etc. Maintenance Maintenance in the normal sense means correcting the problems caused by wear and tear. But software maintenance is different. Software is either wrong in the beginning or later as some additional requirements have been added. Software maintenance is done because of the following factors. I. To rectify the errors which are encountered during the operation of software. 2. To change the program function to interface with new hardware or software. 3. To change the program according to increased requirements. There are three categories of maintenance. I. Corrective maintenance. 2. Adaptive maintenance. 3. Perfective maintenance. Software maintenance is a very broad activity that includes error correction. Enhancement of capabilities. Deletion of obsolete capabilities and optimization, step 78. Hence, once the software becomes operational, whatever changes are done, are termed as maintenance. As the software requirement change continuously, maintenance becomes a continuous process. In practice, the cost of software maintenance is far more than the cost of software development.
it accounts for 50% to 80% of the total system development costs. The software maintenance has the following problems. I. It is very cumbersome to analyze and understand the code written by somebody. 2. No standards for maintenance have been developed and the area is relatively unexplored area. 3. Few tools and techniques are available for maintenance. 4. It is viewed as a necessary evil and delegated to junior programmers. The various phases of the software development life cycle are tightly coupled and the output of one phase governs the activity of the subsequent phase. Thus, all the phases need to be carefully planned and managed and their interaction requires close monitoring. The project management becomes critical in larger systems. 1.6 Summary Software engineering covers the entire range of activities used to develop software. The activities include requirements analysis, program development using some recognized approach like structured programming, testing techniques, quality, assurance, management, and implementation, and maintenance. Further, software engineering expects to address problems which are encountered during software development. Thank you. Subscribe to our channel for more updates and we will see you with the next chapter.